There are two types of bonsai wire. Copper wire, aluminium wire, coniferous bonsai, deciduous bonsai. There's a big difference between aluminium wire and copper wire. Copper wire gets harder as you use it and aluminium wire doesn't. One of the main things that you need to know about copper is that if you leave copper sitting out too long, it will get harder. You can fix this, however. And copper, in contrast to the aluminium, gets harder as it is worked. In fact, if you buy copper wire from a store, it has been annealed. The atoms in the copper wire are nicely, smoothly aligned. There's no stress, there's no force. The wire is very, very soft. And as you bend the wire around the branch, the structure of the copper changes and the wire gets harder. And therefore you can use thinner wire on your branches than you would with aluminium. One problem, however, is that this copper wire, also if you just have it sitting on your bench, laying around, gets stiffer over time. Changes in temperature will mean that the structure of the copper changes even without working it. Now what can you do? Does that mean that this wire, this has been sitting around for about five years because I hardly ever use this thick wire, can just be tossed away? Or are there solutions to this? There are solutions. I'm going to anneal this wire on my grill today. Well, plenty of smoke coming out of it. Now to anneal copper wire, it needs to be brought to a dull glowing state. Basically from 400 degrees Celsius onwards, I think that's about 700 Fahrenheit, but I'll pop it in screen. The conversion, it will start to realign the crystalline structure. Better is to reach up to 600 degrees. I don't know whether my grill will reach it, I smell it, it is warm, it is going, I have lit all the coals and now I'm just going to take this, taking the label off because otherwise I don't know that this one kilogram is five millimeters thick. I'm going to use that later on and just put it back on. Now what happens when we heat this up to 400 Celsius is that all the atoms in this wire will realign. Then I let it glow until you see a dull glow. I'm not sure whether I, I can show it on screen. And then once it is glowing, I take it out and I let it cool. You can dump it in a, bu a bucket of water. At that point, all the ashes will come off and it will be nice and red again. But I don't have a bucket of water nearby. It is two degrees Celsius, almost freezing. I don't wanna work with water. So I'm just going to put it in and lift it out. Now, before I put it in, one thing to keep in mind, you also want to keep it, bring it out again. And now I can just hook it out with a hook rather than with my bare hands, because it is going to be glowing hot. I want to have a good glow on all of these coals before I put it on. It really needs to be nice and hot. So I'm flipping them around, making sure that the glowing sides are up. And I'll give it another couple of minutes to really get through and through hot and fiery. But this looks really good. And this brings me to some safety precautions. If you do this, make sure you have a place where you can put the wire to cool down. Make sure you have some metal hook to lift it out. And yeah, don't touch the wire against anything because it's going to cool down very slowly. It's going to take half an hour to an hour to become cool enough to handle again. So yeah, that's one of the things. Now, if you want to do this yourself, keep in mind, the longer you keep it on the fire, the more the copper starts to oxidize. It is a tight balance. You need to get the whole roll hot enough to anneal. At the same time, you don't want to leave it on that long that it gets all brittle, because that is what can happen if you leave it on too long. Now this roll of wire has been sitting in my shed for too long, so it needs work anyway, because I can't use it as is. At this point, I can't actually bend it with my bare hands. It is gone that hard. So I'm just going to chuck it on here. I'm wearing leather gloves that are soaking wet, so I don't burn myself straight away. And I leave this cable hanging out. Closing it with just a little bit of an access for air. Of course, the bottom is completely open as well, pulling, sucking air in. That looks like it is starting to get a light glow on there. I'll give it another two, three minutes. Yeah, that looks good, that looks good. Now, just for completeness sake, I don't think it's needed. Let me flip this over. 
and give this side also a little time. By the way, this root hook was uh, forged for me by Bobcat Bonsai. And I'll pop a link in the video so you can have a look at how this was made. If you like fire, that is a video to watch. Right, that should be done. And now it really is just a matter of taking it out and putting it down to cool off. This wet concrete should do just fine. Actually, I do like the idea of the black off, so... That's cooled down. Still warm, but not hot anymore. All done. And quite fitting, it is starting to snow. Let's go back into the shed. And there you have it. Now the wire should be soft enough to bend by hand. So it is a very, very simple way to improve your wire, but only do this for wire that really has gone hard. Um, the people that sell bonsai wire, they typically have ovens and they do it in a pottery oven, for instance. And that gives you a lot more control on the temperature that is reached and you can much more slowly heat it so everything is heated properly. But if in a pinch, this works. Now I can actually start wiring out my big pine because for a pine like this, I don't need thick wire. I can just use this very thin stuff. But for my big pine that I'm going to be wiring out, a very big raft, that's where I need this. Now it is soft and I can wire it out. This was a short video on annealing copper wire and how it works. You can do it yourself. Don't burn your finger, don't burn the house down, but only do it if you have to.